Thank you very much. Um, it's a real a pleasure and honour to be here this afternoon to, uh, to talk about uh, s some of the particular issues arising in relation to the, the proposed um, regulatory reforms that affect commodity markets. Um, this is the agenda for uh, my presentation that I, uh, that I submitted last week. Um, since then, I've been asked just to address a couple of additional issues, particularly uh, position limits and management and the emissions trading scheme. So I'm going to kind of rattle through a bit and skip over some of the things that have, to some extent, been, uh, been addressed. Um, and uh, one of the areas that, um, that has been addressed already is the, the, the political dimension. Uh, Paul, Paulina covered that in depth, but it, uh, as did Edouard. Uh, I, what I would say is that I think there are many uh, of the, the market participants out there, both financial and non-financial, who um, would question whether, this, um, whether th there is really an underlying agenda to try and regulate uh, prices and regulate markets um, in more uh, granularity. I, I think we are seeing a backlash against the market mechanism in general. Uh, I think um, as ever, but increasingly, um, we're seeing speculation uh, uh, being branded as a bad thing, not as something that to a large degree facilitates markets and provides liquidity. Um, it's seen as manipulative. We're seeing price fluctuations, particularly increased prices, as being um, signs that those prices are inherently um, unreasonable and that this is, you know, almost there's a kind of conspiracy theorem. So I think that there are um, you know, serious political issues that, that, are, being, that are driving uh, much of this, and I, th I think that's recognised on both sides of the debate. Um, we heard earlier about the, um, the global mechanism, which kind of filters down from high-level agreements at, the, at G20 through the Financial Stability Board, um, which uh, then coordinates with IOSCO and the, the IOSCO task force that was appointed um, several years ago. Uh, that, uh, that task force has itself moved from fairly high-level debates about um, coordination, looking at price levels and volatility, and how uh, markets could be better monitored, to now looking at uh, specific prices, uh, sorry, specific markets, first the oil market and uh, the availability of prices there and how Price, uh, the price discovery process works there, um, and, and probably next on the agenda is the agricultural market. Uh, and I think it was it was quite interesting that um, these mark uh, that we're uh, seeing energy markets, or at least energy markets, are being quoted as examples of how um, financial regulators can coordinate with uh, spot market regulators, and that uh, we can move towards more regulation of spot markets. I, I think. Uh, personally, I think this, uh, and I think probably a, um, a wide variety of participants in those markets would say that that's uh, um, unrealistic. The gas and power example, yeah, I mean, yes, I mean, it, it, it makes perfect sense for the AMF to have an MOU with the, um, with the uh, energy and emissions uh, regulator in, in France, and indeed we can see that um, uh, developing at a European level as the European power and gas markets becoming um, increasingly um, integrated um, under the third liberalisation directive, but I think the uh, I, I think to uh, and indeed I myself was involved in negotiating the um, the MOU between the FSA and Ofgem in the UK. So I mean I, you know I can understand that, but I think the idea that um, we will uh, we can implement that in relation to agricultural products, in relation to metals products, um, is and indeed in relation to um, oil and LNG is. Um, is unrealistic. These are global markets. Many of the producers are, and if indeed uh, perhaps most of the producers are outside the EU. Um, certainly a large number of market participants and influential market participants are outside the EU. And whether in the context of MIFID or in the context of the Market Abuse Directive, it will be um, almost impossible to, to, to control those uh, participants. So I think um, we uh, have a long way to go uh, before we can uh, really see that uh, uh, being realistic. Um, the commodity, uh, and, and I hesitate after what uh, uh, Peter just said, to, to brand, uh, to lump all the, uh, the firms together, but uh, the commodity sector did uh, lobby hard and actually came together as a group and, and, and lobbied for various qualifications and exemptions um, to the original uh, Market Abuse Directive, to uh, MIFID, and indeed to the CRD, as we've heard. 
and all those three um, uh, measures are now being reformed. Uh, I would slightly disagree that um, the Caesar, that Caesar has um, uh, in effect endorsed the reforms that are now on the table. I, this Caesar uh, did look at the, as it was required to do under, uh, under the MIFID directive, did look at the, uh, particularly at the exemptions that were available and, uh, at the, and, and to some extent at the CRD exemption um, for, a commodity, for certain commodity firms. But uh, it really uh, stopped short of saying that the so-called commodity dealers exemption should disappear. It said a lot of further work was needed. Um, and it is somewhat ironic that the financialization of um, these markets, as Edward uh, described it, I think it was Edward, maybe perhaps Paulina, is actually um, resulting in the, the, non the, the genuinely non-financial participants like, the, like oil companies, like metal dealers, um, being uh, potentially captured uh, by the regime uh, as, we, as we go forward. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how, um, how that plays out, because in effect what we're seeing is the physical market um, itself being captured by a financial regulation and, and the participants being captured in that way. I want to um, look more specifically at, the, at, at what that capture uh, uh, entails in terms of derivatives. Um, we've heard MIFID is going to cover more commodity, pro well we've heard the exemptions are going, but in fact MIFID is going to cover more commodity products and it's going to cover um, uh, uh, emissions allowances. Um, we've heard a lot today about the, uh, the increasing number of platform types that will be uh, captured and pot potentially trading strategies. More derivatives will be standardised and traded on, on uh, exchanges and, and of course cleared. Um, but there's a, a, uh, a, a, there are important interactions with the other measures that are on the table with uh, the market abuse directive because any extension um, in, uh, to MIFID has a knock-on effect elsewhere so that uh, the market abuse um, directive is extended to cover those products and indeed um, the uh, market abuses uh, definitions are being extended to cover uh, both MTFs and OTFs and of course the, uh, we now have CRD4 on the table to implement Basel III but we still have no sign of a proposal um, to, uh, as to how commodity firms that ca get captured by MIFID will be regulated for capital purposes. So, um, as, as again Peter pointed out, there's a, a wholly inappropriate regime for companies that have large fixed assets which are uh, disallowed in measuring um, the assets you have for, for capital purposes. So, a lot of work remaining to be done before we have a, a sensible outcome there. In terms of scope, um, uh, MIFID is being uh, extended through um, the changes to three um, three of the exemptions, uh, as Peter mentioned, the commodity dealers exemption going away, uh, being deleted entirely. That was a, an exemption for non-financial dealers who deal on their own account. Um, 2-1-I, um, the ancillary business exemption uh, is being changed. Um, you know, in some respects, um, one might say it's becoming clearer and uh, improved, but on the other hand, um, there's uh, some delegation uh, to level two to, to determine what kinds of um, what kinds of business is ancillary, and I think um, the, the kinds of factors that are being mentioned in the proposal are are, are rather misguided. Um, the uh, the consequences, of course, are that firms that are currently uh, relying on those exemptions will have to become uh, authorised um, in their in their home member states, um, and that will also uh, change the. The, category, the client categorisation for some of them that, de that deal with uh, other regulated and uh, indeed exempt firms at the moment. Uh, the, in terms of instruments, the um, Annex 1 to MIFID, the, financial, the list of financial instruments is being widened. Um, most, uh, uh, one of the areas is the, the extension uh, to cover spot emissions allowances and not simply uh, emissions derivatives and I think that's uh, uh, really a, a very controversial proposal. Uh, probably many of you know, even if you're not um, specialists in the area, you'll have read in the press about the problems there have been in the emissions market, uh, problems with uh, one member state recycling redeemed um, in, uh, allowances, with uh, fishing and other breaches of security, uh, and with the VAT fraud. But all those things have been addressed through changes to the um, registration regulations, um, through tightening of security, uh, through 
the, um, the consolidation of the EU registry into one um, single um, EU registry from, uh, from later this year. Uh, and that's really, the, um, I think, would have been an uh, appropriate way to deal with those issues. There are some issues in terms of identifying uh, the participants in the market, which have already been addressed without embracing the uh, money laundering uh, directive through, uh, through the vehicle of, of, you, of MIFID. You've got one minute. Okay. Um, so I think there are, I th I think there are some, um, well, I think many of the participants in the market and the trade associations in that market would say uh, applying MIFID is kind of a sledgehammer to, uh, to crack a nut. On position uh, limits, um, we've heard, um, you know, this is again a very controversial area. Um, the, uh, the proposal says that uh, the uh, that uh, trading venues should apply position limits or um, or other um, appropriate mechanisms, and then proceeds to define uh, that what's required in such a way that it's very difficult to uh, to avoid having limits. Um, it certainly is uh, really far too specific for a level one measure. Um, and in any event, the uh, the proposal includes powers for the for first national regulators and then the Commission itself to override those. And I think. The, those in the industry and the trade associations would say, well, this is really a matter for the venues. They're the one that understands the specificities of their markets. They're the ones that understand the participants in their market. Um, and indeed, in apply those um, exchanges that have existing position management arrangements um, are very, uh, uh, know that, it's, uh, that you really have to make an assessment case by case um, so that to have a requirement um, for objective, quantitative, non-discriminatory requirements, I think is um, uh, will be quite limiting. So I think um, most of those uh, most of those participants and trade associations would uh, have, in making submissions to the um, the Commission's consultation paper, said we agree with the the paper that was submitted to the Commission um, several years ago by the FSA and uh, the UK Treasury um, jointly, which um, found after. Uh, reviewing extensive academic research and doing um, uh, data analysis that there was no evidence that position limits would help control either prices or volatility. And I think that's probably where the, where the industry stands on this, but um, clearly um, the Americans have gone down um, a, a different road, uh, a road that's more f uh, similar to what the, the Commission is proposing, and I think there's a lot of uh, debate still to be had in that area. Um, what we uh, will see not only is that there will be ongoing debate, but also that, um, that a lot of that debate is going to be around the, the interactions between the, uh, the different measures. Uh, as I said, whatever scope uh, is extended in, in MIFID will affect the status of, of, of commodity market participants as uh, non-financial counterparties, and, uh, and they therefore may become financial counterparties, which means they have to clear more. Uh, and so there are quite a lot of um, knock-on effects to be um, reviewed. So I think given that I'm over my time, I'll uh, skip to the end. Excellent.